Seventeen years ago, 60 Minutes first examined the so-called French paradox, which suggested that the French, despite a high-fat diet and high consumption of wine, had a remarkably low incidence of heart disease compared with Americans. Most researchers agreed that there was something in the wine that offered protection. And a few years later, even the highly cautious federal dietary guidelines say that moderate consumption of red wine can be beneficial. Now scientists across the country have identified a substance in red wine called resveratrol that they believe might do more than just protect the heart, but could, in very high concentrations, significantly extend life by preventing a number of age-related illnesses. If they're right, we all may soon be taking a pill that could give us an extra decade or two of healthy old age. If the promise holds true, I think this has the chance to change health care. Dr. Christoph Westphal says we all may soon be taking a drug that just might beat the clock, a simple pill that could delay the inevitable. Our goal is to prevent and forestall many of the diseases that strike us as we reach 50, 60, and 70, all with one pill. What you're suggesting is there's some kind of rejuvenation drug that turns a 70-year-old into a 35-year-old. That might be pretty hard to do, but I think if we're on a train heading one direction, we can slow down that train. I think we can slow down uh, these genes that control the aging process. That quest to put death on hold began in 2003 when Westfall met David Sinclair, a biochemist at Harvard, who was studying the genetic components of aging. Five years ago, I met David, and he had shown that you could extend lifespan in yeast. That's pretty exciting. Now, if you happen to be a yeast, it's <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> Yeasts are one thing. Human beings are more complicated. So Sinclair focused on a gene present in almost all life forms, the sirtuin gene. It's normally inactive, but when it is active, Sinclair believes it triggers a survival mechanism that extends life. Convinced that something in nature could activate that gene, Sinclair randomly tested thousands of compounds. And bingo, he got a hit, resveratrol. When I googled this resveratrol, uh, I was shocked to find that red wine was the top hit. Red wine is brimming with resveratrol. It's found in high concentration in the skin of the grape and seems to play a role in protecting it from invading bacteria and fungi. Were you aware of, of the research into red wine that it offered certain health benefits? Oh, sure. I mean, that's why I almost fell off my chair when the link was made. And I thought that this was a potential explanation for the benefits of red wine. Convinced they were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough, Sinclair and Westfall launched Sertris, a Cambridge, Massachusetts research company. They, along with a handful of other cutting-edge biotech companies, are developing resveratrol-based drugs that they believe zero in on the longevity gene. The important news here is not that we found something in red wine. The important thing is that we passed a milestone where we can now make drugs based on this knowledge and potentially slow down aging itself. Everyone from plastic surgeons to your friendly snake oil salesman have been promising a ticket to eternal youth for some time. So the prospect of a prescription pill based on red wine that could trigger a longevity gene sounds too good to be true. And yet, scientists have actually known for years of one surefire way of doing that. Stay hungry. Eating a lot of food turns that off. Dieting, extreme dieting, turns it on. These rhesus monkeys are on a major diet. For nearly two decades now, they've been taking in a good 30% fewer calories than their well-fed brothers and sisters. It's feeding time, I guess. Feeding time. They're the centerpiece of a National Institutes of Health study at the University of Wisconsin on whether or not CR, calorie restriction, makes them healthier and extends their lives. To maintain their sterile environment, we had to suit up to visit them with Ricky Coleman, the project leader. These are two of our control animals here. Uh -huh. They are nearing the end of a typical monkey lifespan, about 27 years. And major differences in their overall health are becoming clear. The difference is really obvious. Right. The skinny monkeys actually look younger, their coats are shinier, and fewer have arthritis. 
and those chunky monkeys, many have diabetes, and a significantly higher number have cancer and heart disease. Pound for pound, the lighter guys do better, do much better. Right. Dr. Richard Weindruck, who heads up the study, believes that calorie restriction turns on these monkeys' genetic survival switch. A hungry life seems to lead to a longer life. There is an emerging survival advantage for the monkeys on caloric restriction and 50 percent of the normally fed animals have died and maybe 25 percent of those on caloric restriction. That's a pretty remarkable number. Surely those are strong indications that a restricted calorie intake among humans would be extremely beneficial. It appears uh, to support that idea. But our record as humans in staying on diets is pretty miserable. And worsening. So it's a fat chance that we'll all be giving up our passion for greasy junk. We consume tons more calories than we need. But believe it or not, there are some Americans who just revel in their hunger. I basically just have one meal a day. Meet the skinnies, members of CRS, the Calorie Restriction Society a group that's been severely restricting their calories for years now. They're also part of a Washington University study to see if humans mimic the monkeys. Does this kind of self-denial make them live longer, healthier lives? We joined them for what they call happy hour. So this is uh, in the spirit of a Bloody Mary. Though you might regard it as an unhappy hour, a cocktail of low-calorie soup for starters, and walnuts and baby food, green bean puree on flour-free bread to top off this feast fit for a flea. If I'm hungry, I know, number one, that I have done what I meant to do. I've, I've eaten less than my body thought it wanted. So far, the participants have lowered their blood pressure, reduced body fat, and lessened risk factors for heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. And what's more, to one husband anyway, starvation has its sexy side. To be honest, if you saw her without any clothes, you'd see, look, she looked pretty darn good, like a woman <laughs> like of many, many years younger. Their emissaries travel the world, spreading the faith and the word. Hunger turns on the survival gene. I would like to live um, to be a hundred. The skinnies may not die young, but given their diet, they just might die of boredom. But if the scientists at Sirtris are on the right track, it could mean forget dieting, forget the sweaty business of working out. Just pop a pill and you are in guilt-free couch potato paradise. We have a pill that can mimic many of the effects of calorie restriction or exercise. So one could be very healthy and obese at the same time. Our goal is healthy uh, individuals, ideally via lifestyle, and if that doesn't work, we believe that we'll have a pill that can mimic that. A pill that, in effect, diets for you. A pill that turns on the survival gene. And what we're trying to do with our drugs here is to put the body in a defensive state, to ring the alarm bells and get the body to defend itself instead of dieting to set the alarm off, pop a pill. The pill is a highly concentrated form of resveratrol, a virtual vineyard of healthy living. How much red wine would you have to drink to get the kind of resveratrol that you're using? The sad news is that you'd need to drink about a thousand bottles a day of red wine, which I don't recommend. <laughs> the pill itself may not extend lifespan, but could prevent the diseases of aging. Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, even cancer. What we're talking about is activating the body's natural genetic defenses against diseases. And that's very powerful if we can harness that. Resveratrol has been tested on mice and the results have been encouraging. In this test video provided by Sirtris, both of the mice have been fed a high-fat diet for 12 weeks. But when placed on a treadmill, the mouse on the right ran twice as far. He was taking high concentrations of resveratrol. You have fat mice and you have fat mice with resveratrol. And the ones that are on resveratrol, they can run twice as far and they live longer, about 20% longer. Other studies showed that among mice fed a high-fat diet, 
those given resveratrol didn't gain as much weight as those not given the drug. Sinclair believes that resveratrol actually changes the physiology of the mice. The proof, he says, is in the post-mortem. Their organs looked pristine, youthful, fat-free, uh, and their physiology was just like they were dieting, but they were fat. Convinced they were on the right path, they fast-tracked the drug into human trials on people with untreated diabetes, and the results were impressive. It significantly lowered glucose and insulin levels without the patients changing their diet or taking any other drugs. Originally, our hope was that you'd be able to prevent diseases of aging. What we ended up seeing is actually you could therapeutically intervene in patients who have diseases of aging, and that was unexpected. Yeah, the diabetic patients have high blood sugar, and the molecules bring it down. That's treatment, that's not prevention. Sertris is now developing what they say is a much more potent synthetic version of resveratrol that will also soon go into human trials, this time on cancer patients. I keep on thinking, you know, what used to seem like it was science fiction, I actually believe the biology is right, and if we're right, this may be the most important thing that we're going to do in our lives. Possibly, but it is important to remember that 9 out of 10 drugs that look good in mice ultimately fail in human trials. Still, the speed and results generated by Sertris and the resveratrol drugs are unusual. And Sinclair believes these drugs will not only keep people living longer, but will keep them healthy longer. What we're talking about is potentially making a 90-year-old as healthy as a 60-year-old. A 90-year-old can play tennis and see their great-grandkids graduate from college. People will live active, healthy lives and then die quietly in their sleep. And that's really the aim here with these medicines. Are we on the edge of maintaining active lives into our hundreds, for example? Well, we've certainly passed a corner in terms of the science, and someone's going to achieve it. And if it's not us, it's going to be someone else. But the question that most of us want answered is, when do we get this pill? I would say five years to be conservative, that this will happen within our lifetimes. I'm fairly certain about that. One measure of the potential of this research, Dr. Sinclair and Dr. Westfall's little startup company was recently bought by the pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline for almost three quarters of a billion dollars.